Okay, so I would like to welcome everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm Rahman. So today we'll be discussing chapter three. Uh, it's called Bridges, Holes, and the Small World Problem and Simulation. Uh, I, I really like this. I really like this chapter because <clears throat> it moves between the, the different scales of the network. So at some parts, we'll be talking about uh, networks as a whole and how to simulate networks and how to compare uh, networks and what are different network structures and network architectures. Uh, but at the same time, uh, at other points, we'll be discussing uh, something called bridges and uh, articulation holes and how to uh, think on the level of nodes and edges. So it, it was an interesting and in, I enjoyed reading it and preparing for it. And it's also a bit challenging. Uh, but I think it will result in a very uh, stimulating uh, discussion. So the, the main objectives for today is uh, we'll talk about the, the concept of simulation of different network architectures. Uh, we'll try to highlight what are the different network architectures that are discussed in these chapters and how can we compare one to the other. And we'll talk about uh, connectivity on the level of edges. So we'll talk about the concept of bridging ties. Also, we'll talk about connectivity on the level of nodes. We'll talk about something called articulation points. And uh, so, yeah, let's go. Okay, so uh, in, in this chapter, we start to, we start by thinking of networks as a whole, yeah. So we start uh, thinking of a uh, network, like uh, instead of uh, thinking about where the uh, entities of these networks, uh, we're talking about the structure of the network. And the first structure that is introduced in this uh, chapter is called the small world structure or the small world uh, phenomena. And I think it, it makes sense that it's the, the focus of this chapter because small world is, Many of the networks in real life uh, have this small world structure. So what is a small world network? So a small world architecture is when you have a network in which you will have defined clusters, but at the same time, these clusters are not uh, distinct. They are not disconnected, but they are connected. So the members of one cluster can reach the members of other clusters. But at the same time, it's not randomly that everything is connected to everything. So you have uh, clustering. So, okay, Allah is joining. Uh, Allah is joining. Uh, Allah. I would rather wait for her to join because uh, it's uh, everything in this chapter builds on top of each other. So I think she would benefit from uh, hearing the first few words. Okay. Hello. Uh, sorry, didn't hear. Uh, hi. Uh, no, hi. No worries. Yeah, we have just started, so I, I will start over. Uh, so that you you didn't miss anything. So okay. So okay, yeah, we're you. just starting. So uh, uh, what I was saying is that in this in this uh, chapter we'll be introduced into different network structure, different network architecture, and uh, the highlight of this chapter is uh, a network architecture called small small worlds. Okay, and uh, what are, what does a small world structure look like, and what is this small world phenomena? So this uh, concept of a small world was introduced uh, in an, uh, a paper by, uh, let me maybe search quickly for the paper. Yeah, so here yeah, Duncan Watts, I believe, but I don't remember the year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this was the, the paper in which this uh, architecture sure of small world network was introduced, this phenomenon uh, by D Duncan Watts and uh, Stephen Strogatz. And why is it is, is uh, why does it uh, 
we will get to know how does it look like and but i would like to start by saying why it is important because many real world networks so biological network social network they have this uh, structure that resembles small worlds so what does a small world network look like so it, this is a network where the there is defined structures but and these structures are not disconnected but they, they are connected so you have here i give a definition so in small world architecture nodes belong to well defined clusters so there are, there's a clear structure to the network there are defined communities or structure but they are not disconnected they are still connected to one another so that a member of one community can reach the members of other community uh, but it doesn't mean that every every member is connected to every other member so the member of one community is connected to the members of other community maybe through a, a hub so maybe through someone that is uh, common or have a common knowledge or common connections to both clusters and this type of uh, architecture is characterized by high as i've said like they are highly clustered so they are defined cluster but at the same time because uh you have if because each member of one cluster can reach the member of other clusters by the this hub or by these uh, connections between the two clusters at on average the distance between each bear is still proximal yeah so it's still it's not like uh an a, a regular network where in a regular network you're only connected to your maybe uh, two or three or n neighbors and you're not connected to anything else but here you have both the structure and the distance is small so this might at least for me it sounded a bit counterintuitive to talk about that you have well-defined structures but at the same time the distance small but uh, I hope this will be more clear as we go on and maybe you have came across this concept of six degrees of separation before and actually at what six degrees of separation uh, mean is that uh, if you have in, in a social network, you could think that people that are uh, separated geographically or live in different countries or live in different communities, they are, there is no way that they can get connected to each other. But after a, se a set of experiments, they said that actually in a social network, uh, because it follows somehow the small world phenomena, any two members can reach each other by going uh, following like six degrees like there's six edges between them and i would like to show you this uh, website so this is called six degrees of wikipedia and it allows you to look at this separation between the different concepts in wikipedia so here we can say maybe uh yeah network uh network topology and um, can, can we choose the next one yeah <laughs> go yeah on. maybe uh gandhi came to mind say it again gandhi mahatma oh, okay. gandhi yeah God. yeah so here okay so now you get this <laughs> network to see how many, uh, so here in the start page, so this is the network topology is in blue, and then you have Mahatma Gandhi is in red, and we could actually try to traverse uh, this connections, maybe, yeah, there was something that made it easier to navigate, I remember, ah, here. So these are the path, uh, diff individual paths, so this is how you would tra traverse this network to go from network topology node to Mahatma Gandhi. So you could go to a network topology, hierarchy, <laughs> anarchism, and then Mahatma Gandhi. Or maybe you could uh, go this way, network topology, social capital, Aristotle, Mahatma Gandhi. But there, there are many different paths that you could traverse in order to go from Mahatma Gandhi and uh, from Mahatma Gandhi, from network topology to Mahatma Gandhi. Some of them make sense. Uh, some other others doesn't make a lot of sense for me maybe this one so you have network topology microwave orange then Mahatma Gandhi uh, but yeah so this is uh, an, an example of 
maybe two seemingly distinct or two seemingly very separated concepts. Uh, but in this uh, knowledge graph defined by the different Wikipedia articles, you can see that you could reach one to the other within two degrees. Yeah, so two uh, intermediates in order to reach from one concept to the other. And this is similar. This is basically the this small world, uh, small world concept that you have. You have distinct knowledge domains. Each knowledge domain is different from one another, but still, uh, you could reach uh, from one member uh, of one domain to another member of another uh, domain of knowledge, but with a very few uh, uh, intermediates or very few degrees. And this is this is something that. Uh, Initially, it might be either very, it might, you might get shocked by this and might get, leaves you in awe, but it might, you might also find it like, okay, yeah, it doesn't, uh, I'm not very surprised. But by time, you'll get very, very surprised when you think deeper about it or maybe what it doesn't mean. But anyway, so uh, the goal is to uh, take, to start with one network and try to take this network structure and make it look like a small world structure. And the, the network that we start with, it, we, it's called caveman structure. So this is how it looks like. So basically this is a, a network that is has very, very, uh, it has high number of clusters. So here we have hundred people. So these are cavemen and cavemen are very separated. They don't live in large communities. There are no cities and governments yet at this stage. So they are maybe very small family families. And every, every each family is very connected to each other. And maybe if there is a connection between one family to the other, it maybe would be one member from one family is connected to the other. And you could see that uh, uh, one family is only maybe connected to two other families, but there is not a lot of connection. So this is like a caveman structure. And so this will be the starting point that we will use in order to make a small world. Uh, and we'll see why th is this a small world? Uh, what is the difference between this structure and a small world structure? So this caveman structure, this you have here, we have a hundred people, we have 20 communities. And as you can see, this is a very low density network. So if you could think about all the possible edges that could connect the members of this network, uh, only few of them are actually connected. So this is a very low density. Yeah? So only connected edges out of all edges. So this is the density and it's here it's quite low. But at the same time, we have high clustering. So we have high number of clusters and the members of this cluster, they are very tight. So this has high transitivity. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the thing is, despite that you have this, uh, this network is not very large, uh, you still have high path lengths or the degrees of separation uh, is, is quite high. So this is the degrees of separation, which is the average number of edges connected to random nodes. So if you take two random nodes and try to see how many edges separate uh, two random nodes, and you do this for all the pairs in this network and you take the average, this will be the path length, length, yeah? And here it's actually uh, quite high, so it's 10. Like in a small world, you expect it to be six or seven degrees of separation, even for a very huge social network. But uh, the fact that here for a small network, it's 10, this means that it's uh, quite different from a small uh, world network. Uh, additionally, it but, has, yes, Ala. Um... I didn't get uh, the idea of uh, random nodes because I, I see uh, there are connections between uh, not random in ran not in random way but um, between clusters themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't see a connection between random nodes. At, at which uh, at which part uh, are you referring to the random? At which at which part did I mention random? I, I think um, I, that's what she means. Uh, she's talking about the line below at the uh, so, uh, 
which is called line, yeah, the high pass length. So basically the way we measure high pass length, pass length is by picking two random nodes and measuring the length between them, and then repeating that over and over, okay? And the average number is what comes up, which is the pass length, right? Uh, I see. So here, uh, it, uh, random here, it means that you, you, you forget about this structure, yeah? And you select one node, and then you select another node. So randomly, you are not, uh, you don't take into account this organized structure of the network. You just would like to take all possible pairs, uh, pairs of, uh, of, uh, of nodes here, and then calculate the distance between them. So this is what I mean by random. So, so it doesn't not... mean this, like this connection? Uh, no. So no, no. So it means that you take all possible uh, pairs of nodes randomly, mm -hmm. and then you calculate the distance between them. So, for example, if you could pick uh, an, uh, if you could pick the nodes in a non-random non fashion, maybe you could pick one cluster and look at the distance between the the nodes of uh, the members that belong to one cluster. Yeah, but this would result in a very uh, you will have very small distances because you already started with the members of one cluster, yeah? But uh, what we are interested in is to calculate this path, not within one cluster, but we would like to have an idea about the whole network. So we look at all possible uh, nodes, like we take one node from one cluster, another node from a very different cluster, we calculate the distance between them, and we keep repeating this in a random fashion. Is is it? Yeah, yeah. Get it clear now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, additionally, what I've said is that uh, this network has a large diameter. So a diameter is, is another uh, characteristic of a net network. So diameter can be defined as the shortest path between two the two furthest nodes. Yeah. So if you have uh, a network, you could look at what is the the largest distance that you could walk along the this this network yeah and or uh, another way to think about it is that it's the number of edges that separates any two nodes on average uh, average number I, I don't get how these two things mean uh, point to the same measurement how is an average number the same as the single number which is the shortest path to two yeah so the first is path yeah so here the the output so the first view is a path so the the output would be maybe you would get a, a path that you could traverse on the network so you will get uh node node one to node two to node three to node four to node five and this will be the the the, the diameter of the network mm -hmm. the the other part this view is just a number like that you can quantify so given that path, what is the length of this path? So maybe this path that defines the network diameter is 10 or five. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. both refer to the same thing, but uh, the first refers to the, the actual uh, path and the mm -hmm. second refers to the length of this path. Yeah, but what I was confused about is the part about the nodes. So the first sentence says the two furthest nodes and the second one says any two nodes on average. Yeah, uh, uh, because I see. Maybe it means the two furthest nodes as well. Number of edges separate any two nodes on average. Uh, yeah, maybe I will need to look this up. That's a good point. I don't have a clear answer for this because it's yeah. also very, very similar to the one above. Yeah, average number of edges connected to random nodes. So maybe this one doesn't belong here. It actually belongs to this high path. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, but in, in general, like this, these four. Uh, characteristics of a network uh, shows that this caveman structure is quite but I different. Think, uh, Go on, yeah. But I, but I think uh, he mentioned shortest uh, best, so I think it, it doesn't matter if uh, these edges will be short, uh, furthest or not, because 
uh, it will be short best. So I think when we divide short, shortest best on any edges, um, will give large diameter in any way. Uh, could, could you say it again, maybe, sorry. I mean, um, he mentioned that uh, this passage, it will be shortest path. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter uh, if uh, these edges will be uh, furthest or, or nearest nodes because it will be shortest path anyway. So it, it will get the same results. I mean, large diameter. Ah, okay. So let, let me see if I got it right. So the, the reason here it's specified the shortest path is that uh, two nodes can be, there can be many different paths between two nodes, yeah? Things can be redundant. So if you have yes. maybe two, two, two locations in, in a city, you could reach these two locations in different ways. And what we are interested in basically is what is the shortest path that you would reach from one to the other. And this, this would be the diameter because yeah, so this is this would be the definition, but I'm not sure if I addressed your point or your question. I mean, like the reason there it, it's the here it says the shortest path because there is usually redundancy in the network where you have multiple paths that connect two nodes, but we can't we instead of accounting for all the path, we are actually interested in what is the shortest way to go from node A to node B? And this would be the diameter. And the diameter would be this shortest path between the two furthest nodes. So for example, here, because of this uh, structure of the network, it looks like a circle. So the two furthest nodes is expected to be on a circle would be the one opposite each other. Like it would be like the one, uh, the one that lies on a, on a diameter, yeah? And you could see here that uh, the the, I took this uh, plots from, from the book. Here, the, the author highlighted the, the edges that constitute the, the network diameter. And as you could see here, that it starts from here and it goes all the way to here, yeah? And this maybe, it makes sense to me because these two looks like they, are, they fall on the diameter of a circle. Is it? Uh, Clear now, Ale? Yeah. Ho hopefully, the, the, the Yeah, follow I'm just uh, thinking about this. Um... Yeah, but let, let's keep it in mind, and hopefully, the, the following parts will make it clear. So, yeah, so. Uh, n n so far, we have been discussing this caveman uh, network, and as you can see, that it doesn't look very, it doesn't uh, uh, look similar to the notion of small worlds that we started with, uh, because things still are not proximal to each other. We have the, the clusters, so this was the first criteria of the small world. We have the clusters, but uh, with the clusters, in a small world, you also expect things to be proximal to each other, but this is not the case here in the, this caveman. So how can we convert this structure and make it more similar to a small world, yeah? Uh, and the, the way to do this is to take this network and start to rewire the edges between the nodes in a random fashion. So the goal is to take this network as a starting point and try to take it to the path of uh, rewiring it so it looks more like a random network. And in the middle of this continuum between the caveman and the random, you will have this small world phenomena will arise. This is basically it, yeah. So here, what the in the book, what the author try, uh, tried to show is that you took this uh, network as a starting point and started to do a rewiring uh, procedure. But so by rewiring is that you, take one edge, you break it, and then you connect it to another node. You break it and you connect to other node in a random fashion. And this is how it looks like. So this is the same, not the same network, so the same, uh, yeah, it's same number, but then after rewiring them while maintaining the same uh, degree of uh, 
the, uh, the same average degree, I think. But what happened here is that you quickly lost this structure because as soon as you start to rewire things, this uh, here, as you could see, the, the connections between the node is very locally restricted. But when you start to rewire, things start to jump and start to go across this network. And you end up after 20 iterations with this network that looks very different. Yeah. And actually, what you to, to, to have a better idea, think about this as how it, things would look like if we started here at zero. There is no rewiring. And on the y axis, on the y axis, we have the path length. So if you remember, uh, the path length was high for this caveman. And then when we start to rewire it in a random fashion, it, this uh, average length drops uh, very drastically at the beginning, and it keeps decreasing uh, as the more you do the rewiring. So this is because we, we are taking this network and we're trying to make it as close as possible to a random network. And in a random network, because everything is connected to each other, the path in the, the average path is very short, yeah? And similarly, when we look at the clustering coefficient, in the caveman, everything, there were many clusters, but in a random network, you don't expect there to be a lot of clusters. And this is why when we take the caveman network and we start to randomly rewire it, this clustering coefficient also drops. So it's still high, but it drops, yeah? And basically here, what we are, uh, yeah, basically here, what we are doing is that we are starting at a network that is very different from a small world. We're trying to rewire it so that it looks at, uh, looks more like a random network. And in this continuum, you will find this uh, small world phenomena will arise, which is characterized by the both. You have average length path that is small. Maybe here, for example, maybe you could say that here, this is the, the phenomena of this small world arise because they have a very uh, a very uh, sharp drop in the average path length, but at the same time you have a high clustering coefficient. So this is maybe the this is the 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 values of the parameter that you could uh, explore more to find the the small world networks. Okay, and here I've, I've added this uh, this figure to show you the different structures. So it, it, think of this uh, box as a space of all possible structure based on the modularity, the randomness and heterogeneity of the network. And in inside, you could see different uh, real life examples of different networks. So here you have the internet, metabolic maps, and here you have the cortical map of the brain. So for example, here the brain is very modular. So we have very we have high connections, but we have high a uh, lot of structures in the brain. But here, this is how things would look if they are very random. And I, I found it very useful because this summarizes many structures, uh, or the the possible structures that the network can take uh, when you change the randomness, the modularity, and the heterogeneity. Yeah, uh, but basically. On the top, this is something called scale-free scale -free network. I wouldn't introduce this. Maybe we'll meet it in the other chapters. Uh, this is the, the hierarchical modular and modular. So basically think of modular as clusters. So this is high clustering. And these are the different uh, ways that a random network can look like. So these are, they are random, but they are random in different ways. Okay. Uh, so basically the first part was about this uh, phenomenon of a small world and how it arises on this continuum between the something very something that looks like this and the more we go to a random network the suddenly we end up with this small world phenomenon there was actually uh, something here e yeah. Sorry. Because I have added more plots in order to make things clear. So maybe I will 
switch to our studio quickly. Can you see the R Studio? Cool. Okay, great. So here I've added uh, this to, yeah. This looks similar. Let's remove one, sorry. So, so these two figures show the different structure that we have discussed. We have the, the start, this is the lattice. So this is the thing that looks regular or ordered. You have a structure that is very rigid. If things are only connected, if things are, uh, close to each, uh, close to it, and they all have the same degree. Okay, and this is the, uh, characterized by high clustering coefficient, but the path is very long because things are very, very distant from each other. Yeah, uh, as we move from the uh, from the regular or the lattice or the ordered, they have different names. Uh, end of network to this random structure, we pass through this small world phenomenon. So the small world phenomena has high clustering coefficient, but at the same time, it has short mean path length. Okay. Uh, this is also another way to look at it. You have the regular, this is the regular or the mesh or the lattice. And P, this is the, the probability of connection. So if things, if you have probability of one, this would mean that things are random, yeah? So any node has, a, could be connected to another node. But here things are, P is zero because things are rigid. And as you uh, make it uh, relax, this parameter from zero to one, you have this small world phenomena arise in the middle. Okay, good. So hopefully, so I, I don't expect things to make uh, sense from, from the first time, but uh, yeah, maybe you will find, you will use this as a reference or you come back and revisit this topic. But uh, what I started at, at the beginning, I said that I found this uh, chapter to be interesting because you start with this view, a uh, very high level view over the, the structure of networks in general. And then now we start to talk about the connectivity that shapes the connections in the, between the components of the network. So for example, uh, the first, how can we measure the connectivity of networks? So we talked about the small world uh, structure. We talked, we said that, oh, okay, it have some clusters. Uh, the path is small, but how can we quantify this? Yeah. So we will start by first discuss how can we uh, think about connectivity by looking at the edges. What are the uh, Type of types of edges that are important for connectivity, and then we'll talk about nodes. So on the level of edges, there are a type of edges that called bridges. And here I made like a tongue-in-cheek joke of like a, it's a bridge, but it's also it's also an edge. So I called it like this. I, I wrote it like this. Okay. So a bridge is an edge that if what is when it is deleted, it uh, separates two. Uh, it it separates some parts of the network. So for example, here we have this network. And if we look at the edge BG, if we deleted this part, you will have two uh, disconnected components of the, of the network, yeah? We could also look at the edge GH or HI. So this one, this one, and this one, they are all bridges, yeah? Because if you delete these, uh, any of these edges, you will get, uh, two disconnected, not two, two or more disconnected parts of the network, okay? Uh, but for example, if we looked at this edge, AB, if we deleted this one or the edge AC or CP, if we deleted any of these edges, we'll still have an intact uh, node, so uh, an intact network. So we would not get uh, separated components of the network. And I think maybe a good exercise is to maybe take a moment and think of the number of bridges in this uh, network before moving on and just say the number. So for me, I think it's six. Yep, same here. Do you agree? Ala, do you? Do you have uh, an answer or do you, do you think that six is the right answer? Okay, 
So yeah, so th this is the, the concept of bridge, but there is, a, and this is the definition, it's a only tie and here you call it tie, not edge because it ties things together that connects two otherwise distinct, comp distinct components in a network. And there is actually another uh, relaxed definition of a bridge, it's called local bridge. So here, if you deleted one bridge, one, one edge, you will get uh, distinct components, yeah? But with a local bridge, you will have, uh, you wouldn't end up with two separated or distinct components, but the deletion of this edge would result in the, uh, a very dramatic increase in the path on the, of the average path of the network. So for example, uh, if we have, if we look at this network and here, this network, we have uh, different nodes and you could see that each uh, edge is defined, is labeled as W weak or S strong, yeah? And this edge AB, it's very, uh, very interesting edge because here it connects. Uh, so these parts are already connected. So this cluster, maybe I could use this actually. Yeah, this part and this part are connected by this edge and also by this part of the network. Uh, but regardless, if this edge was to be deleted, the two components will still be connected, but the distance would increase dramatically. So to go from, uh, for, for a member of this part of the network to go to the other, and instead of taking this uh, short path, so maybe here for D to go to B, it was uh, one, two. So here the distance was two, yeah? And now if we remove the A, B, H, for an order for D to go to B, it will be one, two, three, four, five. Yeah? So this is called a local bridge you still have an intact network. The, the connectivity is affected, not in a sense that you have a separ separate parts, but it's just the distance, the range of this uh, distance is, is affected. Okay. How can I remove this? Uh, clear. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And here, what you what you could what you can we, we can now go back to the the examples of of the networks that we started with. So, for example, in the in the small world network, because you have many uh, redundant uh, connections. Actually, what you would notice is that you may have no you may have no bridges in a network that is small world. So a, a, a bridge is a, is a very, uh, is a vulnerability in this network. You, you have to think about it like this. So if you have an, an, a bridge, it's a vulnerability in this network because if you, if this edge is deleted, is a, it's affected or there's an attack on this edge, the, there is a, a large, large disruption of this network. Actually the structure falls apart of, this, of the network. But in the, in the small world, there's a redundancy. So there are more than one path that connects uh, two different nodes. And this is why sometimes you don't have uh, a bridge, but uh, definitely you will have some local bridges. And here we could see the, when, when we look at the caveman structure, after we rewired it so that it uh, looks more like a random network. And then we, now it's in this state of a small world, at least this is how I understand it. Uh, here, the the edges are labeled so that the thicker it, the thicker the edge is, the higher the connectivity of this edge. Yeah. So, for example, here these edges you could you would, could easily see that edges that are very local that connects members of one uh, cluster they are thin. So here the the edges that are part of this cluster or this cluster they are very small, uh, very very slim. But then if you look at the edges that connect different uh, modules, different clusters, like this one, this one, this one, and this one, it has high connectivity, yeah? Because if any of these uh, edges has been removed, the distance, bet that the distance between uh, one uh, module and the other would increase dramatically, okay? Uh, is, is this part clear? Okay. Yes. Great. And um, 
this time I am, I'm not going to run any code. I actually didn't, didn't run the code. I just uh, limited myself to maybe conceptual understanding of, of the topic, but uh, the, the author of the book goes into details of implementing the functions and running them. And I totally encourage you to do so. And maybe if you hit an error or you get, if you didn't get something that looked uh, uh, understandable, you could maybe ask for some guidance and I'd be happy to help. Uh, so these were two uh, measures of connectivity on the level of the edges, okay? Uh, but we could also look at connectivity on the level of nodes. And here, because I'm maybe missing one file, let me switch again to our studio. Okay, yeah, so now we are looking at RStudio, right? Excellent. So uh, this, the, the, the concepts that, or the, the definition of connectivity on the level of the nodes can be defined by this vertex connectivity, or this is also called the articulation point of uh, a network. So if we looked at these three examples, so the first one, this is the networks, and in this network, there is one, a node where if this node is, is deleted, the structure of, of the network will be affected the most. And I think we'll all agree that it's six. Yeah. So this is the no, node six in the first network. This is, uh, if this one is deleted, you will result, you will end up with two separate networks. You'll have this part and this part. So you'll have maybe basically this triangle and this square. Uh, but if we did the same thing and we deleted node two, because in the same location as node six, in this network B, we still have a, a connected graph. So because this three, seven edge and six, five edge is still there. So deleting two is not enough to, to, to result in two disconnected parts of the network. And this is what, what it means for vertex connectivity. So the vertex connectivity of a graph, it's the minimum number of nodes that we need to delete or exclude to get uh, distinct parts or for the graph to be disconnected. So here, in order to get two disconnected, two disconnected components of a graph, we just need to remove six and we will result of, with two co disconnected components here. Uh, is it possible to, how many nodes that we need to remove in order to get uh, distinct components? Um, I have a question. Would yes. removing uh, vertex three in graph number B um, count as disconnecting the graph? So if we it... remove three, I, I don't think so. So because Since if we remove One three... will be isolated uh, in B, not in A. Yeah. In B here, yeah? And we remove one or we remove two? Uh, uh, we remove three only, yeah. uh, point number three. It would Ex probably leave one isolated. So. Exactly, yeah. So this would be a vertex, connect a vertex connectivity. So uh, because it's a, a quantitative measure, so maybe this one will have higher vertex connectivity because it will result in uh, two larger components that are separated. But here you have a singleton, and then the rest of the network is not affected. Uh, so yeah, this would be a vertex, uh, an articulation point. So this is an articulation point is like in, in the skeleton, or I think it's the, the point, the joint is called an articulation point between two bones. So it connects two different parts. Uh, so maybe here an articulation point would be three, uh, is it here. supposed to delete delete uh, three two seven five six? Yeah. Uh, so is this the minimum number? So the the point is, uh, what is the minimum number? Yeah. So maybe it's a uh, three two seven five six. Uh, uh three two. Yeah. I think actually I've added the link to because this is a, this example has a solution 
and mm. you could go go back to the link and see what is the solution to each one of them. I think here there there is no uh, articulation points, for example, in this one, maybe. Yeah. I don't yeah, think sure. that there's maybe an articulation point here. Yeah, so this is another way to quantify connectivity and to assign a, a connectivity weight or a role to each node based on its uh, based, based on the importance of this node in the connection structure of a graph. Uh, finally, another uh, an additional way of looking at oh, there is a glitch. Yeah. Okay. So an, another measure of uh, network connectivity, also on the level of nodes, is something called uh, network, network constraints or PERTS constraint. And this is uh, actually, I think the first time I've, I've, I've seen this uh, measure, it was something not not connected at all to a graph or a theory or network analysis. It was maybe something. Uh, like an entrepreneurship thing, because basically this structure hole is, if you look at this network, here we have three clear uh, modules. Yeah, these modules, you could think of, uh, of these modules as uh, knowledge domains. So maybe this is physics, biology, and maybe mathematics, okay? And in the each, mem uh, each uh, member or each student in this uh, department, in this domain, they know very well about maybe biology. These students know very well about math and these students know everything about physics, uh, but none of them know anything about the other domain, okay? So what would usually happen is that there's, uh, if you think about a startup, there in the, the startup, Maybe someone would be like a founder of a startup and would like to work on a product that connects the three domains, like an app that do something based on physics, mathematics, and biology. And this would be A, yeah? So this would be the node A. So this A, it receives different information from each of these relationships, okay? And then this would mean that this st structural whole that exists between the different domains is filled by A, okay? And if we could think of A maybe as an entrepreneur, we could also think of A as a broker or maybe a middleman in some sort of a transaction. Maybe this on the right here, we have uh, consumers. And then here we have uh, maybe the producers. And in the middle, maybe there is someone works in the, uh, some chain or some uh, transportation that would deliver the products to the consumers. And basically this is the, the hole that is referred to here is the structure hole that exists between these different modules. So there are no connections between them. And this hole is filled by this node, yeah? So actually, I think if you just if you could just spend a few minutes and read the the annotation here on this network, it will make even more sense. Uh, also, the example at the bottom at here, uh, it, it's the same thing. So this concept of whole. So if you could look at this uh, of on this network, here we have these three maybe three modules, and these modules they are very connected uh, locally. So within each module, they are very well connected to, to each other, but then they are separated from one another. But then there is this node that is connected to the three of them, yeah? And this person, this agent can exploit this to transfer the information because it's the bottleneck. If this person is not there, you can't transfer the information or goods or products between the, the 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 components of the network. Uh, I think this is a different uh, way to look at it. Is here we have two modules. Uh, there is a structure hole between them that is filled by this node. You can call it an internal broker. And this broker would just mediate the information or the action of the initiator one to initiator two. And then we have an external broker 
because this is an internal broker because maybe this yellow they belong to the same uh, organization yeah and then this external broker that would connect this organization to yet another organization and would fill this structural hole so anyway these are the the the, the people that are for example i think abdurrahman maybe it would be this person you are filling this a uh, structure hole between maybe medicine and then maybe uh, network analysis or graph theory, something like this, yeah. Uh, and uh, thinking about this, uh, this is very connected to the concept, concept of betweenness that Abdurrahman introduced in the previous uh, chapter. So betweenness was talking about uh, like an, uh, a node will have a high betweenness score if it is, uh, if it connects two different parts of the of the network. So if it is a, the bottleneck would have a very high betweenness. So you have a bridge that connects two islands. So this will have a high uh, betweenness, and this is, but it will have a very low structural hole score, yeah, because it's already connected. So they are negatively correlated betweenness and structure holes, dispersed structure hole, they are negatively correlated, but they refer to the same concept. And finally, uh, I've, at, at the end of the, yeah, at, at the end of the chapter, I've added few uh, figures that just summarizes many different structures that you might find useful. So for example, in this one, you will have here this net, uh, regular structure of a network. So this is a regular network or a lattice, and as I've said here, all the nodes have the same degree. All of them have a degree of four. So this is four, 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 and they are only connected to close by nodes. You don't have any edges that cross this network and co connects the different parts of the network. Yeah. But as you move from regular to random, you start to see this small world phenomena with edges that connects two distant parts of the network. And then you end up in this random where things are connected in a very random fashion. But another view is to think about these different architecture of network in uh, whether they are centralized, decentralized or distributed, okay? So for example, uh, it's not that one network would be centralized and another will be decentralized, but it, it will be somewhere in between along this continuum. So for example, a small world, will have some centralization because here the nodes of if you think of central centralized in a sense that it will be indicated by the degree of the network the degree of the of, of the node here all the nodes of, are of the same degree yeah so this one will be very distributed i think so things are here very distributed but maybe a, a small world would be Centralized or decentralized? Hmm. So this decentralized is the scale-free thing? I'm not sure I understand it either. I actually was about to ask about the scale-free networks, if you would like to discuss that some more. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the concept itself. So, uh, how can I say? Maybe I, I will try to add some material about it in the next chapter. But it's it's basically that it takes the small world, and then you will have more cluster. So you have high clusterability, high cluster coefficient, and the path is even smaller. But mm -hmm. uh, I think I had something here open that was explaining okay. this concept. No, oh, yeah, maybe I will add few, few uh, lines about it in in the next uh, chapter. But the, the the thing is, it's the 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 main characteristic of a scale free, is that here the the distribution of degree of the of the distribution of node degrees, is exponential. So you have high, uh, very few nodes that are have high degree so this is like a, in a social network this is a, a network a community where you have few influencers 
that have very high power. They have very huge number of followers, yeah? So here, maybe the average uh, node degree is highly skewed by only this few number of nodes that represents the influ influencers, yeah? So for example, this one would be uh, decentralized. So you will have, uh, it's, it's a scale free because you have different, you, you could take each module from these modules and then try to see the structure of this module separately. So here, for example, here you have one influencer, you have another influencer, another influencer, but losing any of those wouldn't affect everything. But here you have only one influencer. So you have things, uh, here you have one, one scale, but here you have multiple scales. You have hierarchical structure, something like this. But yeah, I don't have a clear concept. Uh, yeah, so these are just few things that you could print out and stick on your wall and look at it maybe a few hours per day. Hopefully it will make sense to you in a, a month or two. <laughs> yeah, so uh, with this, I, I think I come to, to the end of, the, of this meeting. And I would be happy to hear from you if you have any comments or questions. So. Um, I actually want to share something real quick. Uh, I think I it was a lecture or an article. I don't really remember. Uh, but it was also discussing the small world phenomena and the six degrees of separation. And uh, they mentioned that uh, after studying the social networks on Facebook, uh, we are now only separated by three degrees of separation and not six. So you can imagine how uh, with the onset of, of social networks and uh, technology and stuff like that, we have become more closely connected. But in, in light of what we just discussed, we mean may mean that we are losing our clusterability. So uh, maybe if you think about the social implications of that, I don't know, maybe it means it's related to losing your identity or uniqueness, I'm not sure. But there's something to ponder about. You know? I, I've read something similar a while ago. Uh, I think you might have heard of uh, Dunbar number. This, uh, have you heard about Dunbar number? So it's, uh, you will be very interested about it because you're also in, into in neuroscience and uh, yeah. So Dunbar number is like a biological, uh, a biological limitation of the number of connections that humans can uh, maintain. And it is hardwired in the brain because of how the brain is connected. And I think it was around Donber number. I, I will share with you. Yeah, it was 150, okay? So this is the Wikipedia of Donber number. Yeah, I will share the screen as well. Yeah, can, can you see the browser? Yeah. So this is like the Donber number is the notion that there <coughs> exists a cognitive, cognitive limitation on human groups of about 150 individuals, okay? And by cognitive, like this, the, the structure of the brain, maybe the connection or the between the neurons, something like this. And I remember that also after the, the rise of social network and you could uh, recalculate this, uh, revisit this number, it was also, uh, I think it was increased or something like this. They found that it, maybe it's larger than this. Uh, so I, this is, I think, uh, for me, something I really find interesting about the social networks as like this field of study and also as social networks, like social networks, is that you could quantify uh, previously difficult or previously uh, con only conceptual things. So now you could actually quantify and look at the network and see uh, if this of maybe a concept is, is correct at all, or maybe you could revisit and put a number on it and see if we, how, how it differs between one community and another. But yeah, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, I, I will leave this in the chat. Okay. Yeah, please do. <clears throat> Any other comments or qu questions? Okay. If not, uh, I will end this meeting. Uh, hopefully, I see you in the next week. And thanks for coming and thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, thanks. See you next Sunday. Bye.